expect to see these two champions one more time. Looking at the opening hands here, Jonathan's got uh, no turn one play, but a number of options. Sakura Tribe Elder scavenging ooze on the other side. There it is. There's the time walk. Oh, yeah. this These decks should really clash into each other, too, because both players are doing a similar thing of, you know, Logan's deck is most of the cards are just trying to get your opponent dead as fast as possible. And J bro's deck is doing a very similar thing in a different way. So we're going to see these things just, it's going to be like two vehicles colliding. Yeah, absolutely. Here comes Steve down on turn two with the intention of playing Shieldred the turn after. Now, fortunately for Logan, I believe he does have Shieldred covered, but we'll have to use it more than one card to take care of that. I mean, Sh Shieldred has looked incredible. Even in the um, the last match, we kind of just saw like Shieldred come down into play. You either seal the door shut or put Jonathan in a very, very commanding position. And keep in mind, this was his pack one pick one, right? He took this card, I believe, over fourth Erlingas. Okay, going for the time walk here. I was curious if he was going to try to save the time walk for after Fable was deployed to try to push the advantage that Fable creates. But just... Casting Time Walk is basically a ramp spell to get the Fable out now is also pretty good. It's going to run into this uh, this Shieldred, so he's not going to be able to use the second chapter to draw cards without taking damage. Speak of the devil, though, there, there's the Bloodthirsty Adversary, so good call out on, uh, on that and the synergy between Time Walk. Oh, yeah. That's a 3-3 three, three and an extra turn for 5 mana. All right, well, this turn, yeah, I don't think there are going to be any surprises here. Um, Shieldred's going to be slammed into play. That's going to mitigate the impact of the Fable Chapter 2 trigger. Uh, fortunately, though, we do have the Fork Bolt and Lightning Bolt to take care of the Shieldred this turn. And then we could even follow up with something like Jace's, Jace Friend's Prodigy. Yeah, and also Jabberwocky has the tempo advantage here so he can actually afford to take some damage off the shieldred drawing the cards and maybe shocking with the steam vents because he's going to be passing with like a full board and so the the damage isn't going to matter as much all right so elects not to use the uh the ability there for fable discarding zero cards we're going to see makes sense his yep. hand's good to remove that 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 in tandem with not wanting to take the damage exactly and uh, Jace is in play now. Yeah, everything is set up pretty well for Logan here. He's got Zealous Conscripts if uh, Jonathan plays a big creature. He's got the Bloodthirsty Adversary. If the board is relatively empty, he can just time walk and attack a couple times. And both those situations are pretty good. What about the decisions here from Jonathan's side, right? We see uh, Mana Vault coming into play, but Terra Sunder on Jace, do, do you want to go that deep to stop something like Time Walk coming back? Um, you could. I like this line of just getting the tracker out, making a clue, maybe looking for more cards. You do have a uh, scavenging ooze, so you could just exile the time walk. But I see Jace is Jace is gone. Oh yeah, that, that yeah, scavenging ooze is a card that when we when Reed was uh, drafting made the comment that it's uh kind of i mean it, it's not a card that seems very exciting but there are a lot of matchups where it has applicability and so you know picking up a scavenging unit is, is nothing to be upset about um yeah if you think about the sort of decks you're going to play against it's great against you know control and combo because they tend to utilize their graveyard it's great against reanimator and then in the decks in the matchups where it might not be so good like a creature mid-range matchup it's still exiling and like gaining life so a uh, two-two for two mana that gets bigger and lets you sink your mana into it is also pretty good in those matchups. It's never very bad. Okay, well, bloodthirsty adversary now in play has and uh, time has been walked. Yeah, has copied the time walk and enter the red zone. Actually, trading with the tireless tracker here, so denying um, Jonathan some of the the value that uh, the tireless tracker could get over time. This is a, this is a funny spot because. Normally you combo Kiki Jiki with the Zealous Conscripts, but you can also combo Reflection of Kiki Jiki with Zealous Conscripts. It just costs some mana, but for every one mana, you can make a new 3-3 three, three and then untap the Reflection and then just keep doing it. So I think that might be what we see here. So in total, how much damage will we, will we have in play after the fact? Well, you can play Zealous, steal Mana Vault, and then use the 3-mana oh, oh, oh. from Mana Vault 
to make three more and then use your two treasures to make two more. So you could have lethal damage here, I think. That is that is pretty tight. I'm not going to lie. I think that is absolutely fantastic. I do want to take a moment to just pivot to, to Inti to see... This this is a new card, right? So you're going to see the, the play that Gavin just described happen on the screen. Um, have you played much with Inti? Uh, it's from Lost Caverns of Ixalan, so I'm kind of curious what uh, the verdict has been thus far on the card from you or anybody who has been helping uh, with the cube. When I first saw it, I... I played a hundred matches in my head with it and it was great. <laughs> okay. Nice. All right. So it, <laughs> it's been great. A hundred matchups has been called. Jabberwocky in the meantime is going to take game one here in the finals against Jonathan Brostov. We'll see how sideboarding looks from uh, the perspective of both of the players and then we'll get into game two. So, um, you know, we, we did see, uh, Oh, yeah, perfect. We can see here on the screen. Anything interesting? Anything strike your fancy from Jabberwocky's side? Um, this is always an interesting decision when you have like all of these playables. It's like you could maybe bring in the Inferno Titan if you think that that's going to be good against stuff like Lotus Cobra, Tireless Tracker. You probably get pretty good value when you cast that. Um, things like Thunder Maw, Hell Kite. Or other cards that you could board in, like just ways to deal with these planeswalkers is nice. If your opponent is trying to, sh I mean, I don't know how much of uh, Jabro's deck he saw, so he might not be aware of the planeswalkers as much. But just knowing that if your opponent is trying to shell up behind planeswalkers or something like Shieldred, having aerial damage is just like maybe better than this. I don't know some of these ground creatures that can't attack so well. Yeah, a couple other options. I, I mean. Not really playable, but in that red column, Swift Spear, Goblin Engineer, a char being pulled off to the side, and looks like also the uh, the Inferno Titan as another consideration. Through the Breach doesn't do too much here, and so, so carefully considering the the list of options. I mean, you didn't you didn't really get to see too much from Jonathan's deck, but um, you do know like how these archetypes kind of play out after playing the cube a couple times, and so um, kind of calculating there. What about on the other side? Looks like Natural Order is coming in, which oh. is going to be able to find Kogla. I think that's a nice way to deal with some of the more threatening things from Logan's side. Okay, yeah. That's pretty exciting. The uh, like Clear the board, put a bunch of power and toughness into play. Uh, I mean, the cost on Natural Order generally is kind of high. Um, I don't know if... It, I mean, you're playing against Blue-Red, so there probably aren't very many good ways to get rid of a creature with, you know... Very, very, very high toughness. And so maybe that's something that Jonathan is playing towards. Yeah, also maybe just needing to go bigger in order to beat the the faster plan. It's like you want to just like get out in front of it so it makes it hard for them to attack. All right, well, I am looking at both hands here. I see a turn one mana vault on the other side. I see Dak Fate and the Splitter Twin. We got two keeps, and I feel like this game is going to be fantastic. Yeah, I wonder... This Mana Vault and this Ancient Tomb can produce a pretty big creature off of Green Sun Zenith. I think we we um, talked about Grist being one of the targets that you could play off of this. Uh, the other options don't seem particularly enthusing to me, or in, exciting to me, rather. Well, you um, could wait a turn and then go for Kogla. Hmm. That's true. What, what, about a, what about a turn to Oko? Yeah, that's also interesting. The the downside is then you have used up your mana vault when you have an X spell in hand, so it might be prudent to wait. I'm, I'm don't know I don't know what I would do here. I guess Green Sun, and then Oko next turn. Oh, okay. So Green Sun for X equals three. Maybe this get a Tireless Tracker. Tireless Tracker is a great option here. You could even play like the Ancient Tomb and immediately uh, crack the clue. Draw a card, get put some power and toughness into play. Other option. I think I like uh well I don't know what he's getting. Oh Grist, yeah, Grist okay. is another fine, fine choice. And we'll play the tar pit past the turn, sure. Yeah. Set yourself up for an Oko next turn. Maybe you can just turn the mana vault into a elk. Okay. Well, it it looks like the acceleration is really putting um J Bro in a beneficial position here. I mean, all you can see on the back like Jabberwocky on on the back pedal here um, with only a lightning bolt as the castable. Yeah, Jabberwocky's hand certainly opens up in the next turn. 
However, confronting an Oko might be difficult with these cards. Reckless Stormseeker is a card that I know you referenced in your article. Can you talk to me a little bit about that card, why it's decent here? Well, it's just, it, it creates a situation on board where you can put an unpredictable amount of haste power into play, which really gives you a lot of options in the way that you're going to play, and it puts a lot of pressure on your opponent to deal with it because they don't know exactly what's going to happen. And... Uh, and it's just like a reasonable three drop otherwise. Like it's not, you know, the most impressive card in the cube by any stretch. It's pretty much filler, but it's also just, you know, it, it fills its role nicely. Ooh, and check this out. An end step lightning bolt targeting the untapped insect token. So maybe we're going to see. Yeah, I mean, it looks like clearing a path for the storm seeker. Yeah. Oko coming into play this turn is, is like just actually devastating here. And I almost wonder if we are kind of priced into something like the splinter twin combo to sort of get ourselves out of this one there's just so much loyalty in play right now yeah i think that's likely logan's best bet is maybe find he's got dak fade and end season pyromancer so that's a lot of looks for a pester mite or a deceiver i think deceiver is the one that he's looking for oh wow and using the... the steel ability yeah okay okay giving him this Chromox that doesn't tap for mana. Kind of nice, cheeky. I gotta say, I do kind of like that, yeah. And now you can give the insect token haste as well. Yeah, just all right, this, this is This is all sorts of criminal. I mean, I, 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 I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, like, it, it doesn't seem on the surface like a crazy play here, but like all the small amounts of things adding up, it's just like... It's you know, bullying, it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you get it, all right. First lightning is the top deck here. That's that's gonna be pretty good though, right? We can at least get rid of the Oko. Yeah. You have to take things a step at a time when you're in this kind of situation. And I think taking out one of the premier threats is a good place to start. Yeah. Go I guess ahead. the follow-up is either going to be Dak looting or season pyromancer looting. Or maybe just starting with the season pyromancer. See where that goes as well. I agree. Yeah. I wonder what he's discarding. Uh okay, he's discarding the deck fade. And I was gonna say that 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 does track because I feel like you pick one or the other, your hand is kind of slow here. Unfortunately, is gonna pick up two mountains here, and that might just be uh a game ending a game ending rummage. I just think he's two cards closer to Deceiver. Those aren't two mountains. Ooh, I, just two I love that closer. positivity. I love it. They needed to get out of the way if he was going to draw it. All right. Gris is going to take up Mills, a mind twist. Makes an insect token. I'm wondering, I don't think there are any insects in this deck that uh, we could potentially flip over to get that extra bit of value. Although I'm pretty sure we saw Jonathan actually get the copy of Haywire Might um, mm -hmm. in, in, during the draft. And so that's like a little nice niche synergy that, you know, in some universe is relevant. Yeah, it's something that comes up so infrequently that when it does happen, I'm always slightly confused how I got an extra insect. <laughs> I'm always like, wait, what happened there? And then I put it together. Grist's hidden mode. All right, Lotus Cobra comes into play. Reckless is going to give the insect token haste and plus one plus oh. And it's in the red zone. Yeah, I think it makes sense to just attack here and uh, maintain your like advantage. You're getting a token each turn. You can just send that in as long as Jabberwocky isn't doing anything super threatening. You're not getting punished for doing that. What yeah. if we see a Splinter Twin on the season here just to maybe dig for some more action? Oh, I certainly hope not because this Terra Sunder is going to be the biggest blowout if if that is the case. Uh, yeah, but... Uh... Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Once again, the Walter White meme is just the perfect <laughs> template for this scenario. No. <laughs> <laughs> and this is it. The kick cost being paid on the Terra Center. That's going to target the Season Pyromancer Exile and effectively counter the Splinter Twin. Now, I think the only, like, the only hope as far as I see it 
is that that one card that is below the shell dock aisle will have to get through five cards but uh well grist is gonna do double duty on that and then sakura takes out another card so the shell dock might be active before the game's over maybe yeah although there's 10 damage 11 damage coming in here it's going to be hard to survive Art to Survive has been called. The whole team comes into play here, puts Jabberwocky down to two. Rogrin Triome is the draw. That's gonna cycle. And uh, Lelia. Okay. What we wanted. Yeah, and looks like uh, Jonathan Brostoff going to take the second game here. That's right. We're going to a game three here in the finals of episode two of the Alpha Frog Invitational. This is a great time to remind everybody, type frog in the chat. Now, I'm not going to tell you why, just do it. JK, if you type frog in the chat, you enter a giveaway for 100 play points. Why is this important? Because the Alpha Frog Cube comes to Magic Online tomorrow and is there for, I believe, two weeks. It's there, it's there till the 22nd, actually, right? The 20th. Okay, through the 20th. Excellent. So that is about two weeks or so of playing what is you know described as the most competitive vintage cube um, alternative uh, by many of the best players in the world. That's right. Some of the players that you're seeing here, right? We've seen Reed Duke. We've seen Nathan Stoyer, Jabberwocky, an absolute titan. Jonathan Brostop, arguably one of the best cube drafters in the world. And they all say that this is the cube that you need to be playing. It's live for you tomorrow. So be sure to enter the giveaway on twitch.tv slash official magic online. Hit the follow button to be eligible. And uh, yeah, best of luck. Happy cubing, everybody. Any notes on sideboarding before we get into this last game? Uh, one thing that I might do if I were in Jabberwocky's position is I like when I'm on the play in matchups like this to just bring in all of my ways to just finish the game. So Fire Blast, Char, Thundermaw, Hellkite. I'm on the play. I've got Time Walk in my deck. Like there's a lot of reasons to want to just come out as fast as possible and try to just streamline a victory. Okay. Can, can you maybe go into a little bit more detail there? So like, what, what is the thought process? Is this, you can't win the long game or like, are you conceding that? Well, it's not necessarily that you can't win the long game. It's just that J bro's deck is going like bigger sort of. And so like, at least on the ground. And if, if he's going bigger on the ground, it's going to be hard to attack on the ground for the win. And if we have all these aerial threats and burn, then we can take this other angle of like, okay, well, my plan is to do as much damage on the ground until you stabilize. And then once you've done that, I get to play Goldspan. I get to play Thunder Maw. And then I'll just finish you off with Fire Blast and Char. Because when you have that much burn in your deck, you're relatively likely in a longer game to just you know have maybe eight or 10 points of burn in your hand. And then it's really hard for your opponent to play around that. Okay, very, very interesting. Yeah, I uh, th this sounds reminiscent of like, like, old school Canadian threshold with like nimble mongoose back in the day where you use every single card to put your opponent down to three. And then you, you uh, draw a lightning bolt off the top for the most glorious win. Can you It looks yeah. like uh Jabberwocky going to start with the tap land here, deceiver, exarch and Gitaxian probe also tools that are available. Well, this is a pretty classic hand, probably get to bolt the hierarch and then probe maybe in reverse order there. Yeah, or we could just play the Ledger Shredder and then probe and get a free loot. Okay, yeah. Ignoble oh, Hierarch is uh, particularly terrifying because we have seen Oko, because we have seen Grist. Those coming to play on turn two, I, I will be sweating. Yeah, I'm a, uh, I go by that mantra of both the bird or the Hierarch in this case. Okay, fair enough, yeah. Maybe even um, not use the Gitaxian probe if that's the case, like... I don't know. It's not yeah, like you could save it and just use it for the Ledger Shredder later. Yeah. But in, in the... Ooh, paying mana! Okay, I like that. That's not even a thing. I mean, it makes sense at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, see what the... I mean, if if the Hierarch isn't going to ramp out anything dangerous, we don't necessarily have to bolt it. But seeing the Grist, it makes sense. I rarely see the alternate cost of Gitaxian Pro being used to pay for the spell. Uh, but I suppose in cube, you know, that is something that happens a lot more frequently than yeah, life one would matter. suspect. Yeah. Now, notably, though, um, we will need to hit that third land. So this is going to be a pretty critical turn coming up here. Mm. As Actually, yeah. the natural order is for the Kogla, so I don't know what the other options are. Yeah, with Grist in hand already, uh, 
That was another key key, Maybe key a spell. questing beast or something like that. I think we An saw like oddity. scavenging ooze. Another one was uh, Leovold, but these aren't like like you know slam dunks. Leovold's an upgrade from Wall of Roots, at least. True, true. Uh, and unfortunately, looks like we did not hit the third land there. So Ledger Shredder will be the play. Ooh. Now Ledger Shredder, one of those cards that can get you back in. Jonathan draws this Lotus Cobra for some nice tempo. He can play the Cobra and then the Bayou and then the Grist. And I think his plan was to play the Grist anyway, so getting an extra creature on board is kind of nice. Although maybe we just see a Virtue to kill the Ledger Shredder. No, that wouldn't work. Never mind. <laughs> it would get bigger. Oh, good call. Yeah, I was like, oh, I was thinking the same thing. But yeah, it looks like Grist is going to come into play. It's going to make another insect. Hey, fun fact. I don't know if you knew this, but did you know that Grist is, in fact, very, 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 very tiny? It's like the size of a bug. A planes walking, like, yes. mini. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. And You can uh, cast Stern Scolding on it. Yeah, that is the first time I did that. I, I was just like, I had the same reaction as to when uh, Jabberwocky paid mana for the Gitaxian probe. I'll tell you that much. Well, if my reaction is I've tried to negate Grist or spell pierce it, and it won't let you do that on Magic Online because that would be cheating. But mm -hmm. it does let you stern scolding it. So when I found that, I was, I felt like you know I, the scales had been balanced. Yeah, the uh, the the design behind a card like Grist is so fascinating and really does excite me that you know these new ideas are still coming out. Uh, so props to props to R and D for that. Looks like we did finally find our uh mana source so we do have a game yeah and with the grist and upticking instead of killing the ledger shredder uh logan will be able to just kill the grist here with the bone crusher if he so chooses yeah other option here is to maybe, maybe what play the exarch or the seasoned pyromancer how do you line up the, the options there i think that i just look at the grist as being a threat that needs to be taken out okay it's just going to keep gaining advantage if we don't deal with it and I don't think that, I mean, maybe playing the seasoned Pyromancer and just like looking for the Splinter Twin as a line, but I, I like just taking out the Grist. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. The Grist goes down to two. And then we're going to see here what the option is. Really kind of just hoping to see he's like Splinter Twin somewhere off the top to just like have an exciting finish, but. First, got to deal with the problems that are in play. And oh, okay, you can ambush the deceiver and maybe kill the. Oh, no, this is going to be upkeep. Okay, this is really interesting. I was thinking he was going to try to ambush the Lotus Cobra when it attacked. Yeah, that, that would have been pretty cool. I wonder what the uh, exact uh, reasoning for all of this. This is a very, very conservative line, right? Um, in my opinion, it's sort of aggressive. It exposes your, to, your deceiver to the Grist if. Jonathan just wants to kill it. Um, it really, like, you don't have options anymore to do this. So, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what it's setting up, or I'm trying to wrap my mind around it, to be honest here. Yeah, I mean, there, there are a couple key cards that um, Logan has seen already. Uh, notably, like, Green Sun Zenith was an example of something that uh, he might be playing around here. Although, with the Grist in play already... Maybe Logan is just doing this to prevent something even scarier from coming into play. It's, uh, it's a little bit hard to say for sure. Um, Maybe he wants the Grist to be used to kill something. Yeah, yeah, that could work. You know, like, you, you get rid of the Grist, um, and then you also get to turn off the potential of a very explosive play here. But I guess if he really wanted to kill the Grist, he could just Bone Crusher. So I'm back to... I guess it just, like, has the... Now the Deceiver's in play... And it stops an attack. Yeah, and then also, uh, I mean, this in in a sense does develop tempo, and maybe you can use the Bone Crusher on like a different target then. And this also uses your mana up a little bit better. I mean, that might just be like the one of the other reasons too. I mean, there's like a a laundry list of small choices. Yeah. Like you can go Chandra uptick and then use the mana to cast the Bone Crusher, and then you're getting a lot better efficiency. And it could be that Logan is just playing 3D chess here. He like maybe knows that the Gris is going to be used in this way. Mm -hmm. and he's just like thinking further ahead in the game. Yeah, he's out here in uh, the year 20XX, and I'm just I'm just chilling. 
I'm having a good time. There's well, Laylee. Great magic players have great instincts, so they tend to just know exactly what's going to happen. So I trust, I trust in the Jabberwocky instincts. Yeah, that seems like a really nice T-shirt. Trust in the Jabberwocky. I like that. <laughs> so right. Laylee is nice. It could find a land off the top and start generating some advantage. Yep, I think that's a pretty powerful play. I also like the the season Pyromancer line as well, just to maybe get rid of this Hope's Beacon that's uh, you know kind of in our hand and not really going to be doing anything for the next few turns. I have a dream of using Chandra to cast Chandra, and we only need one land for that. Okay, all right. Well, now that you say that, I guess we're locked into it. Lelia, it is. This, I don't mind like bone is... crushing the Lotus, Lotus Cobra, Cobra either. That's pretty good, too. Um... Actually, so now that I think about it, there's a lot of close options here. Yeah, so. Yeah, and that's what it's going to be. Stomp the Lotus Cobra in the upkeep. He'd have been sad if Jonathan Deadly disputed there. <laughs> okay, so this is enough to cast Kogla. I believe the natural order will be the card attached to the Mox. You know, it's funny because um, I think we talked about Lelia last week, and you said that it was one of the higher-end uh, threats. It was, like, pretty premium. So I'm, I'm interested to know what uh, Jabberwocky's evaluation of that card is, whether or not it was worth it to, uh, to maybe commit to that line here. But we're going to see Kogla come into play off of Chrome Mox. That's the second spell cast this turn. That triggers the Ledger Shredder. And yeah, I think he's thinking about which card to abandon. Personally, okay. probably Lady Leah. Like, it's not really attacking into the Kogla. But, I don't know. The Kogla is also such a problem that we don't really want to just run out the Chandra into it. Yeah, and it's going to take care of the Ledger Shredder there with the fight ability. There's a Zealous Conscript. Okay, that Ooh. spells potential. Yeah, so maybe we just play the Bone Crusher. I could get behind that, yeah. Because we can we can absorb a hit from Kogla without it mattering too much. And I don't want to play the Chandra because it doesn't accomplish anything. So, but if we go Bone Crusher, then Bone Crusher plus Kogla plus Zealous Conscripts is real damage. Yeah. I don't know if there's a potential to like one shot using the uh, the Zealous Conscripts. Uh, Eighteen is a very very safe and high life total. But, yeah, Kogla doesn't trample, and Wall of Roots can just yeah. go under the bus. But I think that it's still a, it's like the best option that we're looking at. And I think that if we're able to, I mean, we just have to survive. And the Season Pyromancer can make one ones to block the Kogla. And if we can just set up a turn where we maybe go zealous, grab the Kogla, get a big hit in, chunt block, and then hopefully maybe play Chandra and finish things off, like with. Deal five to the to the enemy. Oh no! Okay, we're getting rid of lands, or we're getting rid of the that option. <laughs> but I like this gold span and zealous conscripts is also a similar idea. Yeah, for sure. I I really like gold span dragon. I mean, I I watched this card in uh, uh, events of standard past, and um, it is. It is great, you know. Uh, th that was the card that Takahashi won with, right? Um, yeah, maybe. I can't a hundred percent say. <laughs> Piece one, but I do love Goldspan, and I played uh, I played quite a bit of it in its era. Yeah. All right. Well, Token's gonna go ahead and block the Cogla here. We need to. I think. Oh, okay. Is this is this a problem? I don't really think so. The Jace Vince Prodigy is just a ways away, anyways. Yeah, I think that the life off of the scavenging ooze is what matters the most because we're sort of trying to race this Kogla and we don't have like a clear way of doing so. Ooh. That's a time Lord walk. Time walk are good friends if we find another land. What do you do this turn? Do you just take some damage, play the, the Bone Crusher maybe, look to have a better time walk? You, you were the one who was talking about it earlier, right? Like time walk, couple things that matter is like how to extract the most value out of it. Yeah, I mean, it's tempting to try to, like, somehow Jace and then time walk with the Jace, but that's going to be very difficult. 
because of the scavenging use. So I think we just need to maybe abandon that. Maybe not. Sometimes you got to be ambitious. Yeah. And risk it for the biscuit. The biscuit is being risked. I repeat, the biscuit is being risked. Oftentimes in situations like this, you have to gamble because you're behind and you just need things to go right. And so you have to think about like, what's the best thing that could happen for me and then play into that happening. Yeah, we actually saw an earlier instance of that in the semifinals match where Nathan Sawyer attacked with, it bluff attacked into a shielded with two creatures that uh, did not stand to her might and um, he got away with it. So maybe this is where Logan is looking for the same thing. We get a chunt block on the Kogla, absorb as much damage as possible, hopefully find a land so we can gold span and time walk. I believe that gold span and time walk is where everything starts, if good things are going to happen here for the blue-red. Yeah, absolutely. So we find the land, we slam the gold span, we get the treasure, then we can use the treasure to cast the time walk thanks to gold span's ability. I think something that might have been on Logan's mind is this virtue of persistence in exile and six mana in play for Jabro. So if he'd drawn an untapped land, his hand sort of would have been forced. Not necessarily forced, but he would have been heavily incentivized to just play the virtue, which would tap him out and allow Logan to double time walk. Mm, okay. Oh, so there's the land. Been... Okay, so if we go gold span and time walk, then next turn conscripts yes yeah, so we swing in for four put put you down to 21 on scripts plus another four plus seven what if mm, no that doesn't work i was thinking conscript this scavenging is so we can time walk again but getting ahead of the mana i just calculated so that's like three seven that's ten plus another four plus four that's 18 total Ooh. And we would also need a way to get through the wall of roots. So we're not we're not exactly there yet. We we might just be one turn too little here. I mean, what if we had like the bone crusher in play? Yeah, I'm wondering if there's a way that we can increase our board presence and simultaneously like buy a turn. Like what if we play bone crusher, pass, and then block with Jace? And then just tap and flip it. And then maybe try to go off the turn after that. Would that be better? I don't know if we can do that because Restless Cottage can come in. And that's quite a bit of damage and we might be priced into chump blocking. Yeah, Restless Cottage can animate to, uh, to become a 4-4. Four -four. That also makes food tokens, which then can also complicate the whole... I mean, a animating the Restless Cottage even seems better than just playing the, uh, the Virtue. Yeah, because Logan is at 11, so both these creatures are 7 power. Uh, they both need to be blocked if he attacks with all 3. Because 7 and 4 is 11, you can't, you can't only block 1. Yeah, I mean, hey, like, like it is what it is, right? Maybe, maybe you just gotta, like, you know, knock on wood, get a little bit lucky, and find some crazy spell here off the top. Yeah, I'm thinking it might just be Goldspan, Time Walk, and hope for the best. All right, yeah. Logan coming to the same conclusion. Yeah. yeah. When things aren't getting any better, you just gotta throw a Hail Mary. I respect it. One time dealer has been called now. Goldspan attacks, makes the treasure token. Thanks to the gold span ability, we'll be able to time walk, take another turn. And then probably flip the Jace as well. No, no flipping of Jace. Which sort of makes sense. Jace is like, it fogs a blocker. You can block and then flip it, and you don't lose anything on board, and you prevent damage. So that might be its best use here. Mount Mountain is the draw. Oh, 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 yeah. And this is also unfortunate because, well, I'm thinking about this. What if you zealous, zealous conscripts like the scavenging ooze, maybe? That would force the activation. You could lose the lightning bolt. You lose the time walk, but you could maybe probe off of the chase. No, no, no. You lose the probe as well because of the wall of roots. So 
Yeah, I don't think he can. Well, I think losing the wall of roots for a scavenging in his activation might be bad because then he's taking all of the damage off of the zealous. It'd be 10 damage, mm -hmm. 14. And like, if you're thinking about how things could go wrong, that might be one of the ways. All right, well, here's the Zealous Conscripts. What if you, like... No, that doesn't work. I was thinking you could take a land, and then you're threatening more with the Jace flipping, but... Taking the Scavenging use, forcing his play here. You absolutely have to remove the Time Walk. That one is a non-negotiable for sure. Yeah, I think you have to get rid of the Lightning Bolt, too. Yeah. All right, well, that, that means that... Well, actually, can't you afford to get rid of the Gitaxian Probe as well? Because then you're taking seven... Yeah, it's like seven ten. damage versus a card. It's unlikely the card is going to be representing seven damage. Okay. Unless. Unless. <laughs> just, just <laughs> I'm constantly surprised. So I would I would not be completely surprised if we see the Gitaxian probe also removed. These spots are so tight it's hard to think. It's hard to know exactly what the players are thinking about. Yeah. I don't know if there's Oh, you know what? What I've realized, never mind. I've jumped the gun drastically. It it doesn't matter because um the chase can't flip. Well, it could flip in response to him exiling the last one, right? Because it puts the fifth card in. Ah, uh, okay. All right, never mind. Jace has moves. Yeah, Jace can do it. Okay. Fascinating. So the Wall of Roots is going to get in the way of the Scavenging Ooze. Jabro is going to go down to 14. I wonder if we just see the Bone Crusher Giant be cast here. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I quite like that. Now, the position is not the greatest here for Jabberwocky, but we're not dead quite yet. We do have to... Yeah, we block. can block and chump block. And then flip the Jace. And then hope to draw something. Yeah, and the Ooze also can get rid of the Wall of Roots to go up to 15. So so basically, like, I mean, Jonathan has put himself in a very good position, right? High life total. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, dead on board. Wait, this and this is this is very interesting. Kogla has has shown to be very, very Good this draft. This is a card that oh, I um the cottage I, makes it so the Jace doesn't flip. Ooh. Okay. And you and you cannot activate the Jason response there because you need it to basically fog the damage. Yeah. I recently right. read an article about whether or not you're supposed to loot when you have an empty hand. I wonder if Jabberwocky has read the same article. <laughs> The conclusion was you should loot. Conclusion was you should loot? Because nice. you get a little bit of information about your deck. This uh, feels familiar, this article. I believe one of our players, Luis Scott Vargas, wrote it. All right. Well, maybe Jabberwocky disagrees here, says, you know what? I am going to not activate the Jace here. Well, there's circumstances where you wouldn't want to. Okay. For example, if you have individual cards in your deck that are critical like a splinter twin for example <laughs> you wouldn't want to accidentally mill a splinter twin true yeah it might be a uh what's that problem where you get three doors and they ask you if you want to switch doors oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. The, yeah i'm yeah. not a mathematics person but it might be a monty hall problem where you're supposed to loot anyway even if it might get rid of the the one card. I'm not 100%, though. Maybe some math people could uh, could weigh in. 
All right, well, this is this is going to do it then, right? With the island as the last card here, we can animate the, the creeping tarpet. Uh, we can animate the... Yeah, and then and just go, in, go into the red zone there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, I think that that was our last option, was finding the splinter twin there for Jabberwocky, and now it's... Oh, we do have a, this this restless spire, so we can go to one here. Okay. One more chance. One draw step to rule them all. One time dealer! Is it a splinter twin? Hmm. Nope. All right. Yep. Well, now, <laughs> he has to draw the next card from his deck after the match is over to see if he would have drawn the splinter twin. Oh, please, please. One time. Let's see. Is it? Is it? Draw the card. Draw the card, Jabberwocky. Oh, no.